I grew up in Holland when it was kind of really in ruins, just ruins and kind of being slowly rebuilt. But as a child, it was very exciting. You could go anywhere, you could find bombs, you could find bullets. There was no security, but there was a lot of freedom. It suddenly was organized. I never felt completely at home in the kind of organized uh, kind of Western world. All good architecture, it's not only A, which is what the client wants, but it's also B, which is what the architect wants and what the architect thinks is at that point uh, an interesting thing to experiment with or to offer to the client. That is just where the, let's say, the ingenuity of an architect uh, is. It's a very paradoxical profession where on the one hand you want to be precise, on the other hand you know that 10 years later uh, any precision doesn't make any sense of what people ask on a particular moment and so that you give it an additional dimension that whatever happens or whatever change in society there is, that additional dimension will continue to stimulate. So for instance in the print style, that additional dimension is that it can be used for anything. You can also give parties there, you can work there. I like addressing kind of issues, they like addressing architecture. So it's a kind of very pure uh, and, and limited and focused on architecture, which I think has its qualities, but also its limitations. I mean, you realize it. You try at least to not make kind of buildings that make people suffer or that harm people. But you also don't make do a kind of popularity context. I think with CCTV, it's also a building that divides people. But uh, where there's also, in my experience, many people also like it. There is many facilities that were not in the old building that there are public spaces that were not in the old building that you can improvise. It's not a kind of lonely building, but that it's a kind of building that actually kind of relates well to almost any other building and it tries to create a kind of group out of them. Yeah, it's kind of divided by kind of private space and then here is a kind of collective space and there's a kind of constant, constant relationship. Uh, and strangely enough, today with computers, uh, can people, even if they're can in large groups, they can kind of focus for an entire day and not even be aware of anyone in their vicinities. Those things, not so much by architecture, but simply through the evolution of technology and society and politics. Now China, of course, also had the market economy, but basically I think we really suffer from the consequences of the market economy. That kind of things that used to be free, you know, you have to pay for. And kind of more and more facilities, you know, are inviting you on the one hand, but you have to pay to support them. I think that many institutions suffer from their own success. It becomes kind of, in a certain way, really a burden that takes away from the experience of looking at something uh, beautiful. For me, of junk space is that it's defined not for kind of architectural reasons or for artistic reasons or for ideological reasons, but that it's really uh, mostly uh, generated and mostly uh, shaped uh, for either to please or to sponsor economic aims or to advertise. Everything becomes frivolous and without function and it becomes, I think, a burden. Yeah, I'm not sure.